welcome back to dom's corner everybody i am your host dom martino and sitting over to my left is miss sammy ramirez sammy how are you doing today i am doing good happy to be here good 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 and then down to the bottom there is mr adam leach adam how are you doing today excellent awesome awesome and uh guys uh we're gonna have us uh, obviously we do have some things to address today we'll get around to that here in a second um but i do want to let you know that we are very excited to talk about harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban continuing uh the harry potter uh reviews uh this will be the third week in a row and i also want to let you guys know next week we will not be doing goblet of fire i think i've announced this already but i just want to make sure it's clear next week will be the wandavision season one spoiler review then we'll get to goblet of fire the week after i believe or maybe we gotta do the snyder cut i gotta i gotta look at the schedule uh but anyway hey guys uh before we get started here please hit that like button below subscribe to the channel leave some feedback in the comment section and share this with your friends and before Jareth gives me a big old kick in the nuts, hit that bell for notifications. That would be much appreciated. Anyway, uh, so um, I hate to start out on a sour note, but we have things to address, obviously. Um, I want to definitely thank Adam and Sammy for being here. Uh, they're, they're really big moral support for me um, through this time. And there were... I'll, I'll just get right into it. There were comments made on last or the at last episode um by ian having to do with uh, parkinson's disease and we called him out on it on the show i want everybody to know i did talk to him about it afterward and you know that to me was kind of like last straw you know this is the line this is the limit uh, we have, he has been warned about comments he'd made prior and, uh, it's never fun to do. You know, I, I, I like the show to be for me and my friends and Ian is a very dedicated, hardworking friend and colleague. And he's been there for me through difficult times, uh, through good times. I have a lot of memories with him and that's the Ian that I know and love personally. Unfortunately... You guys saw a side of him that was unfavorable, and I understand why people were upset, and I understand why people were offended, and I want this to go out as a reminder that, to all of us, that, you know, one poor comment can end things for you. Ian has decided to step down, and he feels upset and sorry for his actions um i did speak with him i do wish him the best going forward because he has been a big part of what's been able to make this work um but unfortunately when certain things are said it just ends up looking badly on all of us and <clears throat> you know i'm not saying that this is a decision that's going to last forever i'm not saying that ian will never be invited back i'm not saying i'm canceling ian uh, what I am saying is that for right now, he does definitely need to think and needs to reflect. And I hope he uses this time a way to do so and to also realize that, you know, just the smallest things can can make a big, big impact, um, good or bad. And you know again he does send his apology and i wanted to make sure i relayed that he did and um but i i asked him to not be on the show and then he just he he agreed that he should step down um at least for the time being and and for a little while we are in talks uh with somebody else to replace him and it makes me very excited for the future um i know that we're just going to keep powering through and I, I do want everybody to know that, um, you know, as, as kind of the, uh, you know, owner of Anorax, that I do take full responsibility for the things that are said on the show. And, and I apologize for them myself on Ian's behalf, on Sammy's behalf, on whoever's behalf, whoever comes on the show's behalf. Um, I think that it's important that, you know, we do move forward though. And I, I want you guys to realize that that's not what I want to represent the show. 
um, is that kind of behavior, those kind of, those types of comments. Um, I'm going to make myself available on Instagram. If you guys want to DM me and you have any questions and concerns about the topic and situation, I want to be able to make sure it's, it's very important to me that I make myself available for you guys. So you guys can understand that that is not what I want to do, uh, with the show. That's not what, what I want to re represent the show. So if anybody has any questions or comments, please DM myself. I want to make sure that I'm available for that. And, um, I, I do hope that, uh, moving forward that you guys, you guys see us for, you know, more than what had happened, um, and what I want the show to end up being and, and end up evolving into, <clears throat> which is, you know, we're going to have fun. We're going to joke around, but you know, we are, we also have a responsibility to all of you out there, uh, to make sure that, uh, we are, you know, on our best behavior. Um, I know in the moment. Um, a lot of people were probably shocked at what was said. Um, Sammy and myself included, I, I can, I can tell you that right now that we were both very shocked at it and any reaction that we had was from shock from the moment. And because we were both just as surprised as you guys were. And I did call him out in the moment and I did address it afterward. And, um, I want to make sure that uh, you guys know that that's not the reasons that, you know, we have, we have had Ian on the show in the past. Um, I actually, again, I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that he's hardworking, he is dedicated, and he's been a big part of what's helped this journey. And so we, we really do wish him the best. And we hope that this is a really great learning experience for him. And that's pretty much where my thoughts are right now. I'm looking forward to the future and I hope you guys will power through with us. And I want to thank you for, um, sticking it out in, in tough times when we lose people, when we gain people, uh, when things change around, we're still fairly new. I mean, 63 episodes of a podcast is not that much. So we're feeling things out ourselves and we're kind of making moves as things go and making changes as things go, um, based on, uh, what I feel and, and Sammy as well. Sammy has been really there, been there for me, um, in, in these times and, and has been a really good consultant. Um, and so I, I feel like, um, you know, her and I have been making some really cool decisions along the way. And, um, we're going to continue to do that to hopefully evolve the show into what I eventually want it to be, uh, which, uh, the actions from last, this last episode, uh, do not reflect that. Uh, so I want to make sure that I, I, I do apologize for that and that e, I, I really Ian's apology once again. And thank you for being here. Um, but this is just something that needed to be addressed before we start talking Harry Potter and, you know, having a lot of fun with that. Because, you know, I want you guys to know that I do take the situation extremely seriously. And, and, it, and it broke my heart to hear how upset people were over it. Um, but, uh, as of right now, we will not be seeing Ian probably for a very long time. And that's unfortunate, um, probably for some, but it, it was a necessary step I felt, um, in order to, uh, prevent this kind of action in the future. So, uh, Sammy, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, no, that's pretty much, I echo everything that you just said. And again, I'm just again so sorry to anybody who was rightly offended by that joke and again it does not reflect anything that we are here to do or anything that we uh represent and it definitely is a sad thing to know that we did offend people and we just ap deeply apologize and know that we are moving forward from here yeah and adam i know you're not here all the time but is there anything you would like to say about the situation um <clears throat> obviously i wasn't involved with that episode so i don't i didn't see it i don't know but you know i was told about it and i mean all i really have to say is i i mean ian is one of my friends for a very long time i i know ian he he's a nice guy he has a very caring heart he just has a very dark sense of humor and he doesn't always know when to control that and you know i I love I love all different types of humor, but there is a time and a place and know when something's going to hurt somebody. 
and um i it's just in in poor taste and you know i i i love him he just needs to you know reflect and learn something and learn how to better uh put a filter on some of the stuff that comes out of his mouth um but you know it's i am sorry obviously to anybody who was offended by it um and I, I always encourage, I, I've, I've always been of the belief that when people do things, when people do things wrong, because humans inevitably will always make mistakes. I always encourage people to um, look at the heart of the person who said it and, and understand um, and don't hold any long-term ill will towards people because people do learn and grow. And I hope he learns and grows and decides not to make jokes like that again. And we'll be there for him on that day too. So, but for now, it's the right call. So, yeah, I don't want this to be a call to, you know, go against Ian or cancel Ian. You know what I mean? I don't want this to be that. I don't want that to be the result of if there's anything that you, if there's anything you take away here, please don't make it that. I, I, I want Ian to have your love and support. Um, uh, you know, we, he realizes what he did. We realize what he did. It's, it was a mutual understanding that he would step down and, you know, that he needs to think before he speaks, if he's ever going to return. And, and, and that's, that's, um, an important, uh, it, it's important. It's an important thing he needs to reflect on. I, th I feel like, and, and again, we know him well enough to know, to be able to tell you that it's that's not the you know that's not the reason that we love Ian you know that's not the uh qualities in in, in him that we uh admire the most so um thank you guys again for sticking through this this was not a way that we want to start the show but it, it, again a necessary step that we had to take and um and and i think a necessary step that ian had to take too not not just us i think that it was just um something that you, you know sometimes in in life um even if things are going well with something or you feel like things are going well with something it doesn't always necessarily make it the proper fit for you at the time um just depending on where you are mentally or you know whatever the case may be but um yeah and and so I, I i am i'm excited for the future i think that we can really all grow from this and all evolve from this and you know we'll, we'll keep having fun we'll keep making jokes but we will never set out to offend anybody and and you know but we're always going to be growing as people and and as a channel and and we want to just make sure that uh, we're feeling things out uh as properly as possible you know and and do it in in lanes you know what i mean that are that are um <clears throat> protective of our community so that's kind of where that's where my head's at right now and i again i appreciate you guys um you know i that's that's my piece so thank you very much i i hope that uh, you guys are all understanding and we're going to talk some harry potter here and have some fun yeah so uh hope we can transition smoothly here so we're gonna try to do this so let's talk about the third harry potter film in the series harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban i have given this a rewatch um this one directed by alfonso carone uh, i definitely remember when this one came out i definitely remember seeing it in theater has always been my least favorite harry potter film um at uh you know i gave it a rewatch today and uh did my did some reflecting of my own and um you definitely um you know we'll see i mean I'll, I'll talk about it here in a minute but uh first of all adam how do you feel about this one we always start with you i, I love this movie um this was one of the this might have been the first book that i actually re i remember reading all the way through and i think i read it a couple of times at least i really liked the book um and obviously i really liked the movie too um this book kind of had a lot of information in it there, there was a lot of information to put i know all of them do but for some reason i've always felt like that this story had a lot of information to fit in and um overall i think there are moments of this film that um feel that they're paced a little weird that i i wish the pacing felt a little better in some places but at the same time like i said i understand that 
there's a lot of story that they're trying to fit into this movie. So it's always hard to properly pace something when you have that much storyline and dialogue mm-hmm. to fit in to something that can only be so long. So, but all in all, um, I still freaking love this movie. I obviously they're all Harry Potter movies, but in my mind, when the third one goes on, I'm like, Harry Potter starting. I'm like, okay, because the first two are like really good, but they're kind of like warm ups for the story that's really about to unfold. And this movie to me is kind of where they uh, they take the light switch and they crank it down a little bit and they make it a little darker. Like the, the whole movie just has a little bit creepier of a vibe and it doesn't let up from here on out. It just keeps getting darker. So I, I've always looked at the third movie as being that transition point from um, from movies that could possibly be more geared towards children, even though I still don't think they're necessarily children's movies, um, versus when the third one starts, it's definitely like, okay, we're getting darker now. Like this is this is definitely where the adults adults are gonna enjoy. So, yeah, I I love this movie. All right, uh, Sammy, what do you got? So, Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite Harry Potter movie and favorite Harry Potter book. I love everything about both of them. I will say my one big gripe is, like you were saying, Adam, that the book really does have just like a lot of information being told to you that is very important. And I do feel like in the movie, they kind of cut back on that and they kind of take all that information and they only pick out like one key point of it and then they leave everything else because we just simply don't have time to get to it but like for me as like such a fan of the book and the the whole uh book series it just like it hurts a little bit to know that there's just so much more there like every time I watch it with someone I'm like yeah that's happening but in the book they, they explain it so much better and all of this we just don't have time for it but the things that we do have time for in this movie I think are absolutely incredible i think alfonso Cuaron hit this hit it out of the ballpark he home run everything this is really i mean like literally in that the the colors are way more toned down and you know the we even have the lo, uh, the harry potter logo it goes from gold to silver it gets darker you have all of that the to- while the tone is also getting darker as well and as the kids are growing up they're understanding more things and are able to learn more information just as you the reader are when you're, you're like we're comfortable in this world now we know these characters we know hogwarts well enough now we can just expand it and crack it open even more and just add add so much to it i mean i the really it's a lot of it is the directing for me in this film. I just think it's directed so beautifully. The way, I mean, the way the the camera moves in this movie is so unique, to, especially looking at the first two. Again, the colors and the, you know, the saturation is toned down a lot. The Dementors, I think, are absolutely wonderful. The introduction of new characters like Trelawney and Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, I think are just so wonderfully put in. And yeah, this is just my favorite one. The really only gripe I have about it is that there isn't more. (laughs) I just wish we had gotten more scenes from the book, more information, more about the Marauders, the the Marauders map, Harry's parents and uh, Remus, Peter Pettigrew and Sirius Black. That that whole storyline and information is so fascinating to me and I love it so much that I just wish we had gotten more because in the book you get such a clearer picture of Remus's and Sirius's backstory and everything and in the book it's just kind of or in the movie it's just kind of like it's it's said but it's not as deeply explained but literally everything else about this movie I absolutely love okay yeah um all right so (laughs) I uh so one thing I want to point out here too by the way so everybody understands this is the one thing I have always given this movie credit on is and Alfonso especially is that he turned these kids into actors like that. This is the first time they are given like solid ass performances. And I've given Alfonso the credit on that from the get go. First time I ever saw it. And I stand by that. Like the, he did make these kids like incredibly solid actors. I think it's probably one of the strongest things about the film coming off of chamber of secrets, um, going into watching this, uh, having somebody like an Alfonso Caron direct this movie, it's 
noticeably different when you put it on to where it's like it's jarring it's very jarring i found it to be jarring when i first put it on like it's that noticeably different in shift from tone um yes he has a very specific style to the way he wanted to direct this movie um uh, and i appreciate that um you know as somebody who is a film lover and, and and just loves to see different styles from different directors that's that's cool to me you know what i mean like that, that and i think harry potter i attribute that a lot of it to that you know my interest in that because it's like you, we, we this is the first time i've ever seen that you, it, where you get these noticeable differences between filmmakers and like as a kid i even noticed it and i think it, you know it's a big attribute to why i you know really enjoy and am fascinated by different styles and different tones and things like that now and different ways of shooting and alfonso and you both of you have said it have he shot this movie in a very different way um probably than every other harry potter film i mean we we it's noticeable like i said it's it's noticeable to the point where when he first put it on it's just jarring um i think he definitely took like a wizard of oz approach to this uh, to where it's almost like I think this is what he was trying to go for in the v beginning. It's very gray. It's very you know what I mean. It's it's a very gray beginning, and and it should be be a guess because he's at the Dursleys, and and then after that it becomes very colorful. Um, so all this said, this is the best fucking Harry Potter movie of the three that we've watched so far. So i i love this movie now i i have grown a whole new appreciation for it i i think it is better than the first two alfonso is directing his ass off i think that he kills it with this film i i really really love so much about the style there's something that like a lot of filmmakers don't really achieve this but it should be achieved more is when your first act your middle act and your third act all rhyme and the reason that he achieves this so well, and I noticed this, I picked up on this watching it, is, okay, so in the first act, we get Lupin using the Expecto Patronus charm, but it's a very small version of that. And then we get Harry in the middle act kind of first learning that Patronus charm. And then it's like, it's it's almost like, it's kind of a bigger version of that because it's like, it's Harry's using it and his Patronus is like really like majestic-like, you know what I mean? Like when we see it for the first time. So it's like kind of a bigger version of what we saw in the first one. And then in the final act, we get this very epic like version of, of, of the expecto uh, patronum and it's like so in that way like alfonso like used this patronus charm almost to set up his first three acts and kind of be like you know to to give them all their own identity but yet he made them all rhyme on that same hand and by golly the transition shots in this movie are like hyperbolic like how do we yeah. know how else to put it other than that because yeah. like i'm watching this and, and, and by the way adam was talking about the pacing i think the pacing is spot on especially coming off of chamber of secrets i was like holy shit like this movie once harry's on the night bus it never lets up we're just going 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 and it's a good thing like he he keeps it all in line this movie has such sp specific style to it and and like when you're looking at things like in the background it's amazing everything that alfonso wanted to do and that was another thing i wanted to make sure i was really honing in on like the environments in this in this on this watch because the yeah. environments come into play so much into what makes this world almost come alive not only not only that i i we got to mention the additions he's made to hogwarts also i love when we're in the leaky cauldron and like the additions that he's made to that like he alfonso is playing in his own hogwarts he's playing in his own world but yet he carries over all the ideas that columbus had set up so well into this film this is the best of the three it's it's a, it is so epic it is so awesome to watch and you got this time traveling aspect that it takes somebody only as skillful as alfonso i feel like to be able to pull it off as well as he did because that is something that like it is so complex i know especially even reading the book it becomes so complex to the point where putting it in a movie could really confuse an audience member but the way he pulls it off and in such a short amount of time too that's another thing i want to add here is like it took columbus like three hours to make chamber of secrets work properly like alfonso like no nope, fuck you 220 i'm good you know i i mean that's all i need you know and he he pulls it off like 
in stride. And um, I, the one gripe I have is the ending. That's the one gripe I have. I think coming out of this this time is is the ending. I I still I've never been huge on the shot that he decided to end on. I always thought it didn't okay. feel right with the rest of the film, and it's not so much where it ends. The story's wrapped, but it's it's more or less the shot he decided to end on. I know that's right. like a a weird gripe, but it has always been one of my gripes with the film. I never enjoyed the shot of Harry like going up in the broom, Most freeze, freezing and then that. going. Other than yeah. that, this movie. I can't find a flaw in it anymore because the way it transitions from scene to scene, the way that it is all put together, the way that he feels like it's in, it it feels like it's in his universe, but it's not, it's in the Harry Potter universe still, but it's in Alfonso's universe. And like his voice is just, it shines through, you know, he's, he has a voice, like a filmmaker with a voice is like important in this day and age and, and like he has one and, and he's making sure that it's present with 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 hit with this film you know what i mean but he also uh has to make sure that we're seeing the natural um the natural growth of the characters and the organic growth of the characters and he makes sure that that happens and especially again by the uh you know with the way that he he just turns these kids into actors it's insane like when the shit hits the fan these kids got to deliver and he makes sure that they did um and yeah i i just i can't give this movie enough credit it's it's it like blew my mind this time around i'm like what the fuck i i've never seen this movie this way and it's it's I'm so kind cool. of amazed that your perspective flipped so much i know huh? yeah so far right, you were fo- you were like you were leading us on there for a minute you, you were. were acting like you were gonna flip it but yeah. uh i i was, I was gonna to say like... yeah i was ready to fight because i i was gonna say uh you were talking about how um Putting this movie on is jarring, um, and it is at first. I stand by that, but I don't. I don't think that's a flaw. I just think it's like because it's so noticeable the the change of directors. I felt like at first I was like it was a little jarring. Yeah, I was just gonna gonna give a different perspective and say because this is how I've always felt. Like I, I told you, you know, before how I feel like to me when the third one starts i feel like we're getting into mm-hmm. the thick of it um and i've always felt that way because i'm gonna f- just flip your perspective i feel that the first two are jarring mm. knowing what the rest of the series looks like i guess the first two are the odd men out because the third one the the third one sets the tone for the rest of the series because the tone stays the same the entire series it just gets darker it, they just slowly tweak the darkness downward, downward, downward. So, but the first two are more of those that if you sit, are you if you're gonna say any of them are for children, you're gonna say the first one especially. But the first two are gonna be like that. But the third right. one is like the the tone is just completely different, and the rest of the series is much more cohesive with yeah. the third movie than it is the first two. So I would say I gotcha. rather than the third movie be jarring, I'd say the first two are more jarring. Once you've seen all of them, the first two are the ones that are jarring because the rest of the series don't fit with those two. Yeah, I mean, okay, so like I am interested to watch the rest now because like I want to know if I feel that way. Like this was the tone setter. But like even if it's still to me sticks out like a sore thumb because of the perspective I have on it at this point, I don't care. I don't care. I was like watching this movie and it was like, this is a film (laughs) like this is a film like you know what i mean like it felt like a film it it just the first two again i i I give chris columbus all the credit in the world i don't want anybody to think i don't he made those are the two thinking you're gonna say chris kringle Give Chris Kringle all the credit. Give Chris Kringle all the credit. He really answered my Christmas wish list. I mean, listen, those those movies are the two best movies of his career, and and he had to start this series. I I still stand by that. Like, you needed Chris Columbus to start this off, I felt like, because he did know how to make these movies true to the books and and also kind of uh, deliver for, like, you know, the children of the time. And I think that that really... he, He found that in his sensibilities. But Alfonso it's it's like he's on a new level you know what i mean he 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 like he comes in here like like alfonso like came in to set like he was the boss you know he didn't he was like all right this is i have a specific idea 
You know what I mean? I have and vision, people. This is the one, to my knowledge, that J.K. was not thrilled with. And that that's like, you know, I get it because he did, like, throw his own voice on top of Harry Potter. But I think it just, it needed that life breathed into it. You know what I mean? And I think, like, now that I'm seeing it, it's like, it, it definitely has to be a part of what made the rest of the movies work so well. As much as this always was, like, my least favorite one growing up, this has to be the reason reason it opened the doors at least you know what i mean to uh some more mature filmmakers or, or filmmakers of a, a, i hate to say it, higher caliber to come in and, and like you know start to really take on the series and, and put new life into it and and i think that alfonso yeah is definitely responsible for part of that and it's this movie's amazing. I, I've just never looked at it this way. You know what I mean? I don't know, like, mm -hmm. if it's because I'm older now and, like, I understand, like, what a mature movie looks like, you know, and it's supposed to feel like, and, I, and, like, I get that now in my life. I don't know if that's it or not. It, it, I'm assuming it's part of it, but I, I just, I don't know. But, wow, dude, I love this movie. I want to watch Dom it again. Has like, reached, Dom excited. has reached the age of maturity. He has reached enlightenment. He's really <laughs> really that's how i feel like i want to watch this movie again because of like because i just i want to study everything you know like alfonso like that's the thing that he did right. with this film he makes you want to watch this and just look at everything that he did like everything is like a portrait that he's painting for you like every shot every scene it looks like it matters you know and... i'm just excited for all of them if i'm being honest <laughs> i just... <laughs> I can't wait to move to the next one though, because I feel oh, like too. the next one yeah. is significantly darker than this one. Oh, I feel sure. like the fourth one is like, oh shoot, like we're getting like, dark now. Yeah. Like, okay, that's what. Like, if the fourth one like, came after the second one, that real. would be jarring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. By the time you get to the fourth one, you're like, oh, so this is actually life or death. Like, people are dying. Actually, now. People are dying. Okay. Like, if we don't figure this out, like, people are gonna actually die. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. Well, here's all I'll say before we get into the full story part of the review. Like, I, I for me right now, it's I'm going three, one, two. That's where I'm going. I, I think three is the best so far. One, um, right after that, and then uh, two under at, at the very least, which is crazy to me because I always put two really high. I always put two really high. I'm gonna on the agree. List. Yeah, I'm three, gonna one, agree because I had some issues with the second one the next time around. Yeah, I I don't know. I've got, I've got a couple issues with the first one too, but I don't I don't know. I probably would put the first one in second place. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just felt more solid, more cohesive than the second. I felt like in terms of like I told you, like the second know. movie, it felt like Chris Columbus was trying to do way too much for his sensibilities. Chris Kringle, <laughs> and like Alfonso just Alfonso was this was perfect for his sensibilities. Like he just knew how to adapt this and in in a good amount of time with wonderful pacing with wonderful shots and 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 very specific style and and with his voice just all over this thing and, and it just yeah it, it shows man it shows um but you let's start with the beginning of the film as we typically do uh so harry's at the dursley's sorry oh yeah so harry's at the dursley's he's in bed <laughs> <laughs> do you just want to act out the movie for us we i mean i, I literally could i know you could. i could uh, well, and dom will do the score <laughs> i'll do the sound effects speaking of which john williams final harry potter film is this one and um he went out with a bang he went out with a bang on this one i i thought oh my god this score yeah. was incredible and like it, it just fits so well to like the fact that alfonso was doing something different like even john williams knew alfonso was trying to go for something different because it was like the the tone of the score even even shows it you know what i mean i need to hear a little acapella rendition of that uh, double double toil and trouble thing I need to hear you do do a little rendition of that at some point during this episode. It's even better with both of you. That was the frog. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the, um, so Harry's in bed. He's at the Dursleys. He's doing the Lumos Maxima. Always was one of my favorite spells from the books. I don't know why, but I always thought that one was so cool when it came up in the books. Um, but so I was glad it, it was incorporated. It's the here. most useful. 
Yeah. It's definitely turned out to be the most useful. I would use it every day, probably. Yeah. yeah. So he's doing that. And then, um, you know, under under the covers. Uh, I was a little confused because I thought that, like, uh, wizards weren't supposed to do magic outside of school. So that was a little right. off. But I don't think he ever got the spell down anyway. So it was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess he wouldn't get in trouble. But um, I've, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard people talk about that before. And yeah. it, again, I, I don't have an answer for it. He how do they know when trouble, they're going to use? Like, how do they know, though? Do yeah. They have, a tracking they have, like, device? A tra- they have like a tracker. Yeah. They have, like, a track of the Ministry of Magic has on it. Because if in the Harry Potter, oh, Deathbells yes. Part 1, that's why, like, yeah, that's they right. take them because it's the nice tracker. Gets yeah, maybe off. it's just, like, yeah. Harry being, like, slightly rebellious. Like, like oh, the small spells, they slip by kind yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? They slip I mean, by. Are like they home- I always thought it was, like, homework. Right. Like, he's doing homework. Like, maybe. what? Taking you out your tell flashlight. Him- like, come on. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. going to tell him he can't do homework? Like, You know something I noticed about it this time that I... I, I don't know if I noticed it before and just never focused on it, but like when they do the Lumos thing, like there's almost like a little rainbow ring that like slowly moves. Cool. There's like a ring of right. a ring of light that slowly moves in and out, in and out. I noticed that when Snape was in the hallway with it during this movie. Oh wow. And it was like everything is so is so dark and yeah. their faces are overexposed and uh-huh. there's just little faint vibrant ring that goes Whoa yeah and i thought that was really cool absolutely yeah i think i've ever noticed that yeah i found myself wondering i you know i'm i'm an audio guy so i don't know a lot about video but i found myself wondering i wonder how they did that like how do you properly expose a shot like that where you're in complete darkness and you have a perfectly round beam of light overexposing a specific area and then you've got this like animation anyway right. well, that's another thing i want to point out though by the way is is that sound design is even on a whole new level in this movie compared to the first two you can tell like they they just entered like a whole new realm when it came to the sound design and um i wonder if that just has to do with technology because like honestly this movie came out actually two years before the after the first two because the first two they came out like you know in a row like you know you, you know the 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 second one came out the next year after the first this one they took it was the first time they took a delay they took a two-year delay in this one and um so this one came out two years later so i I wonder if the technology had really just advanced that much because i I, like even the cameras look better that they're using to shoot with it's it's just i I don't know i'd be curious to know like did they like switch from film to digital in this time or was that the time period that they did i would have to look that up to be honest but it does interest me um but uh, let's be honest, Alfonso used film. He's he uses the old faithful. I feel like I was gonna say they're probably <laughs> using film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, At the, this early, this early on in the early two thousands, digital was still kind of people directors right. were turning their nose at it. Right. Still at right. this point. Yeah, but. He was probably able to digitally clean it up more at this point, you know, than probably Chris Columbus had the opportunity to, which Chris that's Kringle. no fault to Chris Columbus. That's just, that is how it is. But, uh, what's that? <laughs> Chris Kringle. Chris oh, Kringle Chris and Kringle. Alfonso <laughs> Ribeiro. <laughs> we, we got, we got Santa Claus and Carlton. <laughs> Santa Claus and Carlton, uh, man. Um, so, uh, Harry, he, he, you know, I, I think it is funny how it plays too. Uncle Dursley walks in, Harry goes back, pretends like he's asleep. That's really great humor that he starts out with here and, and humor that actually does make me laugh, especially <laughs> Uncle Vernon looks half asleep anyway. So when he's like actually half asleep, it's like 10 times that usual face that he has. And it's just, it's, it's yeah. so funny. But, uh, so he, you know, so then, uh, next day Harry's asking him if he can, um, sign the forms for hogsmeade aunt marge is coming over uh the marge stuff is super funny by the way like everything going on here like it starts out yeah. intense because he like really offends harry comes and harry's in like hey, harry comes in hot too though like he freaks out <laughs> yeah. like he is he's going nuts and it's like jesus man what set you off but again it's like we see the performance advance so much from you know the second movie in daniel radcliffe like he's he's becoming an actor like alfonso like demanded it from him you know you could tell and um even when he goes upstairs has his tantrum you know what i mean kicks kicks the dresser you know and i love the shot that closes in on his uh that frame where he has his parents picture i thought that was like gorgeous looking and um so then when he gets out of there uh he's you know 
threatening Uncle Vernon to, you know, cast a spell on him. And uh, yeah, I always love he's just like, oh, really? Try me. Yeah. And then uh, he walks out with a briefcase, sits down on the sidewalk. I love the night shots as well, like where the wolf is just peeking out of the bushes. That is incredible, incredible stuff. Gets on the night bus. I love the interaction between him and the him and the um I guess the you call him the conductor, right? Is and he is yeah. uh Dan he, he, That's right. And he's so funny. He's so funny and yeah. and he has a certain look. Like costume design in this movie is another thing that's on point by the way. Um even the fact that he chose not to have the kids wear robes as much I thought was like a big statement on, you know, we're really going to mature these kids, you know, we want them to feel older in the film and I thought that that was an interesting choice. Um so yeah, so they um so he's on the bus you know the bus scene is super cool um i was watching the shots going on here and i'm like jesus christ like even when you're like harry's on the bus and you like you look out the windows it just looks so cool you know what i mean that bus is like speeding and it it's insane like how he was able to pull this off but um you know then when it goes through shrinks through the uh that that was super cool shrinks between the two bigger buses like mm -hmm. that that or the two buses coming at it i should say super cool stuff the talking head might be a little over goofy for me but he's got some funny lines you know what i mean he throws out the quips that make me chuckle for sure and it's it's good enough uh i love the hey if you have the pea soup make sure you eat it before it eats you i, I think that one's pretty good and then like uh they get the leaky cauldron harry gets out and uh yeah then uh oh i love when they almost hit that old lady by the way that was another thing i had to point out <laughs> pretty funny um uh, then they he gets out you know they go into the he goes to the leaky cauldron talks to cornelius fudge i love the hunchback i can't remember his name um cracks me up oh, though in the movie and he is just the, the laugh he has is, is amazing the, uh, 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 it's so good and then <laughs> uh you even hear it later on in the movie too if you listen closely when they're back downstairs in the leaky cauldron you actually hear that laugh come up again um uh, very very funny stuff i really enjoyed this uh whole opening um uh, leading into the leaking cauldron uh straight down to the fact that ron and hermione are having arguments about the cat like that stuff is really fun to watch and and um some of my uh, more favorite moments with those two characters you know as well um is just definitely their chemistry throughout this entire movie um oh my gosh the leaky cauldron has so many cool details just the guy even that's like wiping up the table he grabs the bottle i don't know if you noticed that he grabs his bottle with the napkin and then the bottle disappears into the napkin it's just like where do you think of this shit you know it, it is like this kind of stuff wasn't i didn't feel in the uh chris columbus ones and, and it's just it's just so much it's so cool to just make every shot matter and every shot count and anyway leaky call uh, leading up to the leaky cauldron adam i'll start with you what do you think uh yeah uh, the beginning of this movie a lot, a lot of wild stuff happens in the beginning of this movie. Uh, it's really fun. Um, yeah, Harry losing his temper and blowing old gal up. <laughs> I love that part. I think it's hilarious. Because, I mean, let's be honest. She deserved it. Yeah. Like, 100%. I would do it twice, yeah. at least. So I really like that part. Yeah. Speaking um, of making your shots count, her just flying like a little speck in, in, in the sky later yeah, on when he's walking down the alley. That was good, too. But go ahead. Yeah. Um, the night bus. I really like the night bus. It's just it's so goofy and bizarre. It's just kind of um, if it has any purpose at all, it, at least it kind of just expands the universe a little more. It just it makes it's just another one of those little things that just makes this universe seem a little more mysterious and a little cooler. Um, so I like that whole bit with that and the talking head, yeah. the crazy Caribbean accent. Um, um, yeah, the leaky cauldron is cool. Uh, just the whole movie, it's noticeably darker in tone. Noticeably darker um, and a lot more of those bizarre shots that just expanding the magic of this mm -hmm. world i i think the beginning of this movie is is really strong and you can tell from the very beginning that this is directed by a different person yeah yeah for sure uh sammy so yeah again i love the beginning of this movie i think it does a really good job of kind of bridging you into the dark the more dark tones of the movie because the beginning is more 
is the most lighthearted we get in the right. whole in the whole movie. Um, and I think it does a really good job of kind of leaning you into that where there are like shenanigans happening, but even like he literally blew up his aunt and like allegedly the Ministry of Magic had to come down and like wipe her memory and do a big thing. Like that was like that's a lot. That's a lot more than Dobby mm-hmm. dropping a pudding on your. They're like on your. It's like fine. Exactly. Yeah. We'll exactly. let it go. We, we do not. We do not expel students for blowing up their ends, <laughs> Mr. Potter. But um, yeah, so I love all of that. I love the uh, how it bridges you into it. I also really like um, a, a little where you get little hints of the more darker things to come, where we see Loki, Sirius Black, for the first time in his dog form. Yeah. Uh, while he's waiting for the night bus and you know he thinks it's like a, a grim or a demon or something and you know just like little hints of that you get while also but then the next scene is you know the night bus and you have all the magical fun on that uh so yeah and I again I love all of that I love Stan Shun Pike the how that the whole thing's going I love Take It Away Ernie um yeah yeah and I love when the, the leaky cauldron that's in London um I love all of that I love how this is a little bit later but there's like one part where the whole everybody's like eating at a table and there's like a tea kettle just like kind of floating through the air like offering like more tea to people and like things like that are just so cool and just make you just love this world yeah this is like and some people might watch this and i probably had this problem too uh where i watched it for the first time and and it almost felt so heavy-handed again like i said it was jarring but in my opinion it's part of what makes his alfonso's voice come through so well is it's really him saying it's it's letting you know this is gonna be different he's letting you know as as best as possible he really is he's talking to his audience but i also really respect respect that too you know what i mean like I, I respect the fact that he's finding a way to communicate with his audience as a filmmaker letting them know this is not going to be your typical harry potter movie we're doing something very different this time and, and he he finds a way to let you know that and it, it's cool it's very cool it was a really good choice of director for this and um so then we get over to we kind of forgot to mention too the the scene of where Harry's like jumping on his book, he forgot that book that goes around. Right. Oh yeah, the yeah. Monster Book of Monsters. I forgot to throw that out in there, but then Mr. Weasley um, pulls Harry aside and he tells him what's going on with Sirius Black. Not really. He just pretty much tells him like stay away from him, um, which I thought was really crazy because this is a very different sort of scene of uh, an interaction between Harry and Mr. Weasley because um, we haven't seen. Arthur Weasley, you know, talked to Harry at, at, in this kind of manner before. Um, and I thought that the communication between the two was just played very incredibly well. Um, I also really, and then we move right into the Hogwarts Express at this point. I like that Alfonso's like, we're not going to do the platform nine and three quarters joke this time. We're going to move right into it. You know, I mean, he really wastes no time to get to it. Um, there's a small part, you know, where they're in the platform and they're on the platform and she's handing him scabbers, but he uses uses that because it's important he scabbers as an important thing to hone in on but he doesn't just like go to platform nine and three quarters just because you know what i mean and i feel like that's where i hate to say this like i I struggled with in the past with chris columbus's films because chris columbus i felt like just showed us things because like he felt like we would want to see that as fans more or less than is it really necessary like he i don't feel like he always thought about what was necessary and what wasn't in terms of cutting the movie together so i feel like alfonso definitely did some trimming but it's not noticeable because we are transitioning to things that are important from scene to scene and even if it doesn't feel important in the moment it definitely all comes back around you know what i mean and and so uh then we move into so we're on the uh, hogwarts express and it's a very different the shot of the rain by the way when it's in the right very cool um Beautiful. that was something different i really respected that oh i like when they get on the scene makes me laugh when they go into the uh yeah they're they're uh what, what would you call that their room in on the pl- like compartment compartment thank you that was the word i was looking for yeah and uh they go into the compartment and then uh he's like who who you suppose that is and then never mind professor rj <laughs> lupin he ron gets so upset does she know everything how does she know everything it's suitcase, suitcase ronald it's <laughs> like i just yeah you feel the 
chemistry of these characters and moments like that you know what i mean like they have been together for three years now like and you feel it you know what i mean it really shows those even those little throwaway moments like that it's always just building that relationship i feel like in this movie and that's awesome to me i love it and um so when yeah so i mean the way all the dementor stuff goes down is incredible um professor lupin you know just waking up out of a sleep and just pulling out his wand was super badass it was uh fighting off the dementor i love it um gosh this is the first time remember i was telling you i didn't really feel like the first two just like were like visually unique and, and this movie is it's visually stunning it really is um uh, it's a visually stunning harry potter movie it, all the way through it and um so when he's he pulls out that wand uh again it, it's just it's a really cool visual moment it, it, it's it's just um the the kind of sound design that comes into it and where where um you know you hear harry's mom the way they put it in there was so well placed um and then i like the uh the chocolate bit that keeps coming up throughout the movie eat it it helps it really helps <laughs> like i really like that and uh he um yeah so he gives harry the chocolate and it, it, it helps him does um so then uh you know we move into uh the hogwarts this is the first time we see the carriages ever too this is another thing that alfonso kind of added to the world is the carriage ride up to hogwarts uh before they were riding boats <laughs> now they're on carriages uh so they get up, they get up to Hogwarts off, off, on the carriages, and then they uh, we're just kind of moving right into the Great Hall. Um, then the um, the uh, singing happens, which is something new. We haven't really seen that happen before, like a choir, you know what I mean, in Hogwarts. So that was different. And uh, I want to point out here too: this is the first time we're seeing Michael Gambon as dumbledore and i like the way that he's introduced you know he gives them the classic dumbledore coming up to talk to the students he's like all right i'm gonna give you the moment because you know this is like the it's it's almost like make it or break it time do you do, are we on board with this dumbledore or are we not and michael gambin actually a, actually absolutely kills it as dumbledore in my opinion i think i love richard harris you guys know i sang his praises on both the, the past two reviews i actually think gambin is the better 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 dumbledore um i think that he he really is and um there's something about his approach that made me feel closer to the book version of dumbledore and that this isn't just on this watch i always felt that way from the first time i saw this movie i was like this reminds me more of the dumbledore from the books i remember even the first time i saw this movie it felt that way um which but, was yeah. which was sad because i missed richard harris he just had such a sweetness about his performance and unfortunately that's not here and i am still i'm always curious to know how that would have been of course but you know um still the way that gambit approached it like he walks up there it's like he's dumbledore you know and uh that's that's really saying a lot considering you know it is such a heavy transition you know from one to the other i think it just speaks a lot to the way he performs it right off the bat and i always felt that way when i watched it and uh it was very cool to see him come in and play this role and um yeah um uh, i i uh the um professor the charms professor flitwick has a very mm -hmm. different look though he got younger for some reason never really understood that um but he had gray hair in the first one and we see him again here and he's he got like a toupee or something i don't know he looks younger but it's, it's got a toupee that's that was it that must be it he just got a toupee yeah. yeah everything about his qualities looks completely different but okay whatever i guess i'm rolling with it and um anyway uh so then yeah the great hall scene and uh they, he talks about the dementors presence gonna be at are gonna be at hogwarts because of there's a killer on the loose Sirius black uh which just sets such a darker tone for this film just right off the bat too like you understand that we are going to go into a darker toned direction i guess but anyway adam what do you got on all that um the uh yeah the ride to hogwarts with the dementors like i i always remember watching this for the first time and like seeing a dementor for the first time and thinking like oh this is this is scary this thing is scary i don't like that thing <laughs> so i i really like the introduction to the dementor with the 
the windows freezing over yeah. and it's cold yeah. and like it's awesome. just like sucks the color and the joy right out of the air i always like the weird effect like it's pulling their faces like when yeah it's, it, yeah just like uh, i i really like that scene i like the introduction um sets a good tone for how you should feel about the dementors mm -hmm. and, and it, getting introduced to lupin lupin is one of my favorite characters in harry potter he's just like such a likable guy like so yeah, incredibly likable i i love seeing him for the first time he's one of the reasons i always look forward to watching this movie yeah me I too I, I can character. honestly say that that's true like even even back in the even growing up on it like i've always just loved lupin you know what i mean it's one of the other he's aspects just a likable that, guy yeah, yeah. um and then yeah um it's it's funny like you'd think right then and there like a dementor is like sucking the face off of a student and it's like you'd think we would be sending somebody a letter about that mm -hmm. like hey like you sent these dementors here especially since it's like ha happens multiple times in the movie where it's clear that these dementors have a thing for harry right. i think i would be sending somebody a letter yeah but whatever hey guys okay so uh it looks like we're having some technical difficulties here so uh we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here unfortunately so sorry about this uh but we're gonna wrap up part one and uh we will get to part two either next week or the week after um and we'll have that out here for you as soon as possible very sorry uh didn't intend on this uh, but yeah uh, if you want some extra content go follow sammy and i on stereo at don martino and at sammy ramirez uh sammy before before we go where can the people find you yes you can find me i'm on instagram at sammy ramirez 14 and also on twitter and stereo at sammy ramirez all right appreciate that and adam where can the people find you at the red eclectic everywhere <laughs> yeah and you're putting makeup on your wife on tiktok this week right at some point well, she's putting makeup on me i'm putting makeup on her it's a whole ordeal. Right on, man. We're, well, we'll be looking forward to tuning into that. And uh, for myself, you can it's find it's kinky. For myself, you can find me at uh, on Twitter at dom underscore martino underscore and on Instagram at or dom Mar dom underscore martino underscore official. And uh, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave some feedback in the comment section, and share this with your friends. And before Jareth's coming, Jareth comes and slaps me in the face. Uh, please hit that bell for the notifications uh yeah and, uh we're gonna wrap up part one of prisoner of azkaban and we will get to part two guys i promise so uh thank you for tuning in and bearing with us through all this uh bs so uh we will see you guys next time thank you Bye bye